Hey guys, welcome to the third weekly recap. Today we're going to just talk about what we did at the meeting, which was we picked Patrol Night for you guys, which was the Nightmare, Nightmare Patrol. And we also talked about just some general knife and axe and fire safety. So quickly on some knife safety, I'm going to grab my Leatherman here real quick, and I'll show you guys some quick tips. So this is the knife. You're always going to want to do what's called a safety circle, where you take your knife... Sometimes you want to close it, other times you hold the blade like this, where it's... Stick, like I don't know if you can see it, but I, I was holding it like this, where the blade is sticking away from me. So I don't cut myself when I'm doing this, but you swing it around in a circle. And you get all your... like Just so you can tell that nobody's in it, nobody's allowed to come within that circle. You also always whittle away from you, because that way if you're going towards you, you, end up, you can end up cutting yourself. And... When you're doing a handoff, I'm going to talk about those. So, you close the blade fully, then you give it to the person, they receive it, they say thank you, and then you can let go. So, that's basically all we do with knife, knife safety. And if you're like in a general usage space, like if you're at a camp out, you're just sitting at a picnic table whittling, you're going to want to move to another area. That way, because if you're in a general area, you should be flexible about moving when you're whittling but if you're not and you're just over by yourself in like a spot just at like by yourself then if someone comes in your circle you should be willing to move out of the way or you should be not willing to move out of the way you should make sure they know that you're you have a knife out and they should stay away from the area so now I'm gonna go on axe safety I do not have an axe up here but I do have a drumstick so I'm gonna use that and I'm going to put my wallet on it as the blade. So, some things that you need to know about drumsticks, or not about drumsticks, about axes, is that just they're a lot bigger. So, when you do your safety circle for them, you hold them by the blade and you go like that. I hit my wall there, but you're going to want to go around like that. Normally, you're going to have what's called an axe yard. So, when you have an axe yard, it's just filled. Or just not filled, but it's a whole area just designated to using axes, and that's probably the safest way to do it. Most when you're on a longer camp out where you're going to be needing to use axes, it's always good to have one of those set up. And then when you're using an axe, you're going to want to do what's called the contact method. It's kind of hard to explain over a call, but basically what it is is if this piece of paper right here is my uh, is my wood, you hit into it with the axe like this. And you put it down on the flat surface, and you repeatedly do that to try to break it, to break the wood. So we'll, we'll demonstrate it more in person, but that's your general idea. And then with handing off an axe, I'm going to make it so you can see it. So you're going to want to make sure it is down, the blade is down, and over to a side, and not pointing towards you or the person you're handing it off to. You hold it like that, and then you, the person who's giving it does it on top person who's receiving it on the bottom that way if the person who does who is giving it lets go early then the, uh, the person who's receiving it can catch it quicker quicker because they're below and that's about all with knife and axe safety we'll talk more about this in person because there's a certain card it's like your whittling chip for cub scouts but it's called a totem chip you need that for both knife axe and saw safety we'll cover that more in person and next we're going to talk quickly about fire building. So the way fire building is done in three ways, or there's three things you need for fire building. You need your wood, which is like your fuel, so anything that's that can burn safely. You need your uh, heat, so like a source, like a match, a fire starter, a flint and steel, anything like that. And you finally need air. Oxygen is what helps fuel the fire and create the flames. So you can't do it like that's why when you put like a cap on a candle it burns out cuz it runs out of oxygen in there. So what you like what you do is you normally want to build from small to big. So if you've got like a ton of wood shavings, you want to put those towards the center and then some small little twigs build those up either in a teepee or log cabin format around that. I will have picture I'll have a link to a pamphlet in the description of this video so you can see but you build up in a teepee so it looks like a pyramid kind of or cone and then you progressively get bigger wood around it so you go 
a little wood shaving, some twigs, maybe some small sticks, and then finally some thin logs, and then if your fire is going to need to be this big, then you get some larger logs on there. And then if with log cabin, you want to get them all relatively the same size going up, but it's like, if you've ever played with Lincoln logs as a kid, you just put two down, go in one direction like this, and then two down, go in the other direction like that. And you keep building up and up and up until you've got a respect like a, a height that you think is going to be good. And you want to have everything like maybe it shrinks as it goes up so that things can like catch fire as they go up and then burn down. And then there's also a lean to so if you've got something in your area, like I'm going to just use this cup as an example. You've got your uh, this will be like your fire. And then you've got like just a larger branch, and you just lean sticks up along the entire thing. That's a good way to get a fire in if you've got something to help prop up. So that's basically all on fire building. The general safety is you're going to want to have maybe a designated fire area, like with surrounded by rocks, like you normally see in like pictures of like a stereotypical fire, or you want like a like a fire bucket, like a round piece of pipe around it, just something to contain the fire in one general area. Uh, that's about all we've got on knife and axe safety and then fire safety. Just There's also a thing you need called a fireman shit if you're going to be lighting fires. So our homework for you guys this week is to uh, practice building fires and like practice building the different types of fire lays and send, and take pictures of those so we can see what you're doing. And if you have any questions, feel free to talk to me or Ben. But that's about all I've got for you guys this week. I will see you on Tuesday.